Morning. How's everyone today? Uh, so, I'm going to talk today about Power 5.10. Is anyone running Power 5.10? Are there any people running 5.8 instead? 5.6? 5.5? Uh, anything before that? 4.036. So, I'm doing this talk because I did a 5.10.1 talk. And I referenced all, lots of things in 5.10 and people went, actually, I don't actually know what she's doing. Like. So I'm going to start here. And if this doesn't work, we're going to do a 5.8 talk. Let's see how it goes. Um, so I'm going to see how I hard. Uh, I live here, I like food, orange, uh, and I'm currently in charge of 11pm, although I skipped a few letters in my founding news of my user groups. And I kind of started Yapsi Europe. And I'm interested, I'm helping with lots of things. But for today, I'm a pearl hacker. And that's P with a little p. P with a big P is a language, or and then chooses a language. P with a little p is Pearl, the Pearl interpreter itself, or how we build the Pearl things. And the scary thing about Pearl interpreter itself is that it's not written in Pearl. Very sad. And it's good to look at how things have changed in the past. Pearl's really old, older than you might think. Um, Pearl is 22 years old. Is anyone younger than 22? Not right. <laughs> I have a Pearl 5 that's 16 years old. Uh, there have been many, many releases of Pearl. Uh, we did learn a, bit, a little bit from marketing, uh, but the reason we have major releases of Pearl is because we want to show off a lot of things have changed in the past. But we haven't been doing so well in releasing versions of Pearl recently. Uh, so Pearl 5 was a long time ago. And then we've got like, little, we've changed the way we name, we number Pearl a few times in the past. Um, <laughs> But now we're basically stuck. We're, we're like, uh, so by now we're, we're 5.10, and if the 10 is an even number, then it's a stable release of Pearl, and if 10 is a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 5.11 is a development version of Pearl, so the next major version of Pearl is 5.12, for example, that would be nice and stable. Uh, but you see, we, there have been jumps between major releases of Pearl, so between 5.6 and 5.8, there was a, like, a couple of years. But then there was a big jump to 5.10, and a big jump for like major sub-release of uh, 5.10. Um, so what we've been doing in the past is getting uh, getting good at making release of the bug, and I'll come to that again. And so basically, people want to know, what's in 5.10? And the thing is, we actually put new features in 5.10, so we've got a new way of, of recognizing features. So there's a feature module, or, or pragma, which says, because we don't want to break people's old versions of code, we worry a lot about backwards compatibility. So if you want to use one of the new features, you have to explicitly say so. So if you want to use uh, the save feature, you have to say, I want to use this feature. Or if you want to use all the 5.10 features, you can just say, I want to use all the 5.10 features. Uh, or everything in the future. So my favorite version, of, my favorite feature of 5.10 is the smallest feature of 5.10. Uh, it is it is same. It is just like print. I mean, it's a couple of characters shorter, and you, and it automatically puts a new line in the game. It's it's not the most complicated thing in the world, but it's really useful. <laughs> Seriously, it's under it's, it's under it's like how much useful this is. Uh, and uh, one of the major major other features is a sync <coughs> operator. Um, which is for persistent stage variables. And I have yet to think for a really good example of all this. Anyone? Oh, oh, yeah, parser token. Parser token. Ah, okay. If you're writing a parser, it's kind of useful. Yeah, exactly. But basically, it's a way of saying um, there's this variable internal to me, which I want to keep, which which I want to, to keep state. So uh, this will keep on giving an increase number, for example. And you can initialize it. And you can initialize it. Uh, yeah, so people used to use a weird hack of my to do this, but now it's in the language. Uh, and the smart match operator. Basically, we took a good look at Pod 6. And it does a lot of things to do uh, with matching, uh, because uh, Pearl's regular matching. And the regular expression, uh, an equals tilde matcher, we decided to use this on other. Uh, other types of things. So you can check whether, for example, uh, a string matches a regular expression, or you can check whether an array, anything in an array matches a regular expression. 
or uh, anything in array matches uh, a scalar, so if a scalar is in the array, uh, or other way around. But this is actually not very useful in general. It's much more useful for the switch and smart match, uh, a switch package. So there was a switch module in Perl before, but it was it wasn't really thought through and it was slightly fragile. Um, but now we have a, a better way of doing it, which is the switch feature. And it's actually not called switch, it's called given. Um, and you say, uh, when we're talking about given the foo variable, uh, if it is, if it matches uh, ABC, then do this. If it matches something else, then do this. And otherwise, do something else. For a long time, Paul really hasn't been very good at switches. And I think this should basically make people use switch more because it's very easy to use and it has very good basics. And because it uses smart match, it can do much more. So you can say that uh, if something is unbeft, then do something else. Uh, if something uh, is uh, in this array, so if something is, not, is, is one of those digits, then it's an odd digit from one time. Um, otherwise, you can continue and pull through, or you can stop and do something else, or you can do comparisons in, or even call a subroutine. So it's a very powerful feature, and you can make very compact code with it. So if you start writing uh, chains of if else's, then it's a good sign you should be using a uh, given instead. Uh, and another small feature is the define or operator. Uh, it's like a uh, slash slash. Uh, it's like a vertical bar bar, but it's to the side. Uh, so it means instead of testing for truthness, it tests for definedness of uh, what? Yeah. Uh, so it's basically equivalent to. Uh, so C or equals D is C is D plus equals and C is defined. So this is handy if you're finding defaults for things, basically. And there's been a lot of changes in the retro expression engine uh, for 5.10, uh, including all these. And basically, it makes it much easier to write parsers in retro expression, and everything's much more flexible. Uh, but the one which is important is that if you're writing a regular question, um, you have to remember numbers. You have to say what match, what did I match? If I'm matching this time stream, um, dollar one is the first thing you match, and dollar two is the second thing you match. But it'll be ideal, and in Perl uh, 10 you can. Uh, you can say this thing which I'm matching uh, after the white space, it, we're going to call hours, and that's going to be a, a list of digits. And so after that, you can look in the magical uh, percent plus uh, hash and just take the things out there. So in conjunction with the X flag, this makes regular questions much more easy to understand. Uh, X uh, allows you to put white space everywhere, and comments as well. Uh, so if you write no questions, this is a really good way. If you're ever munging data with Perl, which you might well do, it would be a great way to do it. And there are a lot of new modules in Perl Frank 10. There's a bit of conflict within the core. It's whether we want to have more things in the core or fewer things in the core. And it's not really a feature thing, it's a maintenance thing. Um, but 510 has a lot of modules in the core. These are mostly because uh, module build and CPAM plus enter the core. Uh, so most of those are dependencies of that. But that's, I guess, the odd one. Um, but it means the core is bigger, the core has more modules. And we have lots more documentation. So that a bunch of Unicode documentation has been added. And then we have the Perl community. So if you download Perl, you can find out where people are, uh, how to talk to other people who do Perl. <coughs> and there were a huge bunch of performance enhancements. Um, so most of the things you do will be slightly faster in Perl 5 but um, mostly because uh, Perl 5.10 uh, uses slightly less memory than uh, 5.8. Um, so all sorts of things, and a huge bunch of regular question applications. So that will make a bunch of things faster. We took some things away, which is good for us, because uh, but they've been deprecated before, and very few people use them. So does anyone use pseudo hashes? Does anyone know what pseudo hash is? <laughs> uh, well, they were kind of bad and a mistake. Uh, so we deprecated them a while ago, and 
uh, because we have no release cycles, it takes us a while to actually take them out of the core. Um, and there was a bytecode compiler, um, which never really quite worked, and was experimental when it was in the core at the beginning anyway. And uh, no one took it to work, so it's gone until someone wants to make it. And it was too slower than just... And it was slower than just interpreting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a problem. Uh, and there was a Java uh, in space, which kind of bit rotted as well. So as if no one uses anything, if no one uses a particular bit of Perl, uh, then there's no point in it being there. And we'll concentrate on making everything else that people use much better. And in 5.10, there was a bunch of other stuff, uh, which I'm not going to talk about. So this is the other stuff in the changes, which I'm not going to talk about. And that's all the things that have been, that are actually in the documentation. So there's lots of other things, which are too minor, which are just minor fixes. So Unicode database, uh, other things. So a lot more changes. Uh, 5.10 has lots, lots of bug fixes, lots, lots of performance fixes. But 5.10.1 had even more bug fixes. Uh, the two major ones were um, we uh, assigning to happen score was slightly slower than 510, uh, so we made that faster. And because everyone was using Musilot, uh, Isa was a bit of a performance bottleneck, so we made Isa uh, even faster. So we decided to make Moose faster. And there are a couple of major features. So we had D-Trace support to Perl, so if you're using uh, Solaris, you can inspect the internals of Perl to know what's going on in your Perl program. Uh, and also <coughs> is added to Perl, which is a great module which checks the return functions of system calls which might fail and will give you will automatically give you an error message for it. So instead of having to uh, check the return value of say open when you open a file, if you use auto die beforehand, it will check it for you and give a nice error message saying uh, you had an error opening this file because this happened. So that check that helps you with not having to write exception code when you don't want to. And we put uh, music 2 support in core because we want the files to be compressed smaller. And let's see if that's we want to read it. And uh, a couple of uh, things as well. Uh, so 510 on itself had lots of platform updates, but 510.1 has a, also a bunch of platform updates because some of these platforms didn't exist when 510 was out. So uh, Haiku is the typical one for that. It's a new operating system, and it has Perl 510 support, 510 support, uh, and builds by and runs by everything. And does anyone use GAIX? Sigwin? Previously? Uh, Iris? Haiku? Excellent. 17 people. Miros? I don't know what that was. Uh, WSD? Strauss and Strauss? Symbian? Uh, Win32, okay. and VMS. Uh, that's pretty good. Excellent. And there were some uh, feature tweaks. So there had been a big change of the given and the switch segments. And we'd literally taken things from Perl 6 and put it in Perl 5, and we haven't quite thought it through. So there were some minor tweaks to do with how things start and match. We probably were business, and it all just basically worked better. Uh, and we deprecated a few more things. So the old switch module, which was Fadrel, we said everyone's going to use Gibbon, it's much better, so we deprecate that. And Suid Perl was a way to have a, um, to have, uh, have elevated privileges for a Perl program. And in general, we think another way like sudo would be better. So we deprecated that because we, did, we thought it was too fragile and a big band. We wanted other to people, we wanted people to really think about becoming root, so they have to do it specifically, and Perl won't do it for them. And we did a lot of development changes in the last couple of times, couple of years. So last year we changed from force development, uh, force budget control system to the Git version control system, which means that you can have the entire history of 22 years of Perl on your USB stick, or your laptop, or your phone, or anywhere. And it's it's really, really small, and you can Find out who's playing really, really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any code surviving? Yes. Yes. Some yes. of the regression tests. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Some of the regression tests were line for line perfect from Perl one. Although well, one got updated recently by somebody, which I kind of upset me away. <laughs> but yeah, this doesn't really. I mean, 
Yes. Move their issues around to make it easier for us to take in CPAN modules or modules which are developed on CPAN and in the core as well. And this won't really change your Perl much, it'll just make it easier for us to develop Perl. Uh, oh yes, I'm going to change the spell back to someone. The source file has a very informative humor, humorous quote about come to you. And now we know <coughs> where they probably are. Uh, but while we were doing this, we also added lots lots of tests. So it's interesting to see how many more tests just uh, 510 modern has than 510. <laughs> And a bunch more because of the bundled libraries we had. Nicholas? But 5.10.1 can run them in parallel. <laughs> <laughs> and because we have so many tests, we want to run them in parallel. And so it can, they can now. <laughs> uh, which is a big win because compiling that is often quite fast, and then you have to wait a while for all tests to run. But going back to the way we're changing, we're doing lots and lots of development releases at the moment. So I, uh, I was unexpectedly pushed into releasing a version of Perl. Because <laughs> <laughs> the person who was going to do it was on was away for the weekend or was didn't quite know what data it was going to be. Uh, so but the great thing about it is that within about four hours of work, I could release the version of Perl. <clears throat> and the more often we release versions of Perl, the easier the easier it will get for us to do it. And if we can release lots of other versions of Perl, like we're going to do on a on a monthly schedule from now on, it should make it really, really easy for Jesse um, early next year uh, to release a 5.12 release. <coughs> we have lots of, so it means we're constantly changing, we're constantly adding features, making sure things work, fixing bugs, and making things faster. Um, and that means we'll have a very steady schedule, which means it should be easy to pop out a 5.12 release. Because we've been very bad about that, but we're getting much better, and we have people to do it. <coughs> That's basically. In general, you should really be using the right uh, There's absolutely no reason not to. Uh, it, it is faster. It uses less memory. Uh, it has more features. Um, and it's backwards compatible, so it won't break anything. Do you have any questions? You missed my favourite part. What was your favourite part? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the fact that well, instead of getting <coughs> use of uninitialized value, quite often it can now tell you the name of the variable. That's wow. <laughs> uh, so it has a set of warnings as well, so it'll tell you when you're, when you're making mistakes, where the mistake is, and what variable you make mistake with. Not always, but usually. <laughs> I don't think that was in public. Does the D-trace work on Mac? Uh, I don't know if D-trace works on Macs. Okay. I think it's anti works on that, so I don't think it probably works on Where is it? <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? This is a kind of philosophical question. As Perl 6 is not going to be anymore the substitute of Perl 5. Um, Perl 510 is very different. So it's a lot of enhancement. Why is Perl 510 there to Perl 10? And then we can get <laughs> any new versions of Perl 5. Naming version numbers is very hard. Um, well, it's like when Java goes Java 2, which is possible to. Uh, but so it's like, uh, it's all marketing. So it's not that Java goes into. So Perl 5 is Perl 5, right? So we all use Perl 5, we will use Perl 5 in the future, and we want Perl 5 to be better. So Perl 5 will continue. Um, but, and Perl 6 is a separate research project. Um, so but it seems a bit odd that the number of Perl 6 is higher than Perl 5 because it's not here yet. Not in a way that everyone might use want to use a production. Um, and with so, so trade, the way is, we want to more talk about Perl 5, one way of doing it would be to say we're, it's Perl 5 as one word, we're version 10. Uh, but it doesn't matter. At some point, we're going to get too high with like 518 or something, and we might have to do something else. Um, I don't know. Uh, We'll discuss it in future. It's still Perl 5. It's not specially different. Immediately even on that thing. So Perl 5, 7, and 9 will be Perl 5. Perl <laughs> 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 oh, 7 is quite good. <laughs> or, oh, a time's over. I'm going to have a lunch break now. Oh, no, a coffee break now. Um, <laughs>
Thank you very much.